installment of our rebroadcast series, podcast Hash 57, titled, Is It Time to Embrace the Spirit of Innovation? Featuring Mike from COT on the End Generation Project. Originally aired on March 27, 2024, exclusively on councilofkind.com, this episode goes into Bible study with the realm of daily excellence with esteemed speakers. Dive deep into discussions ranging from biblical eschatology to overcoming addiction and alcoholism. Today's rebroadcast of Is It Time to Embrace the Spirit of Innovation? Hosted by Michael from Council of Time. Join us as we uncover the freshest global perspectives in today's riveting episode. We're privileged to deliver daily insights from Michael, a prominent Christian figure renowned for his focus on end-time prophecies and readiness. For more details about Mike from COT and the Council of Time, please visit the Council of Time website linked in the description. Our commitment extends to providing truth, hope, and aid to individuals grappling with addiction and searching for spiritual guidance. Your backing propels our mission, enabling us to steer individuals towards truth, sobriety, and preparedness for the trials ahead. Discover exclusive content on our New Locals community, tailored for our EGP family. Stay tuned for more details. Lastly, immense gratitude for contributing to the success of the End Generation Project. Okay, now, before we get into today's rebroadcast podcast, is it time to embrace the spirit of innovation episode 57? Let's acknowledge the remarkable growth of this channel, reflecting the hunger among believers in these end generation times. It's truly a blessing that our content is reaching audiences worldwide, with translations available in over 12 languages. As we continue this journey together, we're dedicated to keeping this podcast ad-free, made possible by your subscriptions. Remember to subscribe, like, and share for daily excellence. We cherish your feedback and the incredible stories you share. Now, let's delve into today's podcast. Is it time to embrace the spirit of innovation? Tune in to the rebroadcast of End Generation Project's podcast, Hash 57, with Mike from COT. Blessings to all. Good evening. Let me pour you guys out. Let me see if I can see you here. I have to see everybody. Today is Wednesday, right? Today is Wednesday. And just in case you guys don't know, today is number what? Well, the end of that 40-day period starting at uh, starting uh, Friday or February 19th, right? Uh, the end of that is quickly approaching. You guys know that, right? <clears throat> it is quickly approaching. If you add 40 days to February 19th, you get Saturday, March 30th. That's what you get. And uh, that's what you get. And that's our time. Believe me, the pace has been of grace. Didn't mean for that to rhyme, but it did. But the pace has been of grace. All right, everybody, so we have a couple of events in the world. Yes, we do. Channel Zero should be, I see, Channel Zero is not on yet. It is. Anybody on Channel Zero? Somebody confirm that Channel Zero is working. If you could do that, that'll be a blessing. Channel Zero. Well, in the consistency of COT, I'm going to have to get you guys ready for an unknown event. I'll do that. I'll do my best. Now, we may have a break coming up unexpectedly. Okay. We have a, uh, uh, I'm expecting a small interruption, just a tiny one. Then that will go away and we'll get back to uh, our broadcast. But I want to thank you guys for being here. All right. Also want you guys to know our doors don't ask questions, but our doors are going to be open pretty wide, right? I want you guys to use everything within the capabilities of those doors to put me to work for you. Can you do that? Can you do that? Right? Can you do that? So uh, we discussed a long time ago we needed some type of order and procedures doing things, and I, I knew I held back on the admins, but I want the admins to, I need them to be well-versed at the exact same time, with the exact same things, without uh, w- without the hindrance of 
of a lack of uh, user interfaces and software and things of that nature. And so we're going to get them up to speed, admins, you will be up to speed, and, and, and so that um, everybody can, so we can actually help each other out especially those listening, especially you guys that uh, you visit or, or enjoy the midnight hours, right? Our 24-hour programming idea is still going forward. I'm not, running out of, I'm not running out of steam yet, but one of the most important things to me, which is placed in my heart from day one, is that everybody have a breakthrough. Anybody and everybody have a breakthrough. Not some breakthrough that uh, I can declare or anybody else can declare, but a breakthrough that you can declare, right? Your freedom, you walking free, you being able to walk in the world without the weights, without the constraints, without all of that. And to finally walk in freedom. You know, I continue to tell people, I know the days are going to get rough, but I'm going to tell you something. These are the days of your liberty. These are your days of liberty. Right? Your liberty. That's important to me. Zero should straighten out here shortly. Okay, plus I'm adding, uh, now I did say we did consolidate, right? I've been crunching numbers to see what we can get away with. I'm going to add two more, uh, two more networks to the base here so that we can output free on those bases without audio interruptions. Most people use some uh, services like um, live stream and all those things, right? Um, which are, th those things are, you know, that's okay for a pretty big, organization. We're not a big organization like that. We need audio going out. Lots of audio. We also need that line for a data transmission line. So any any broadcast channel that we have has to be a data transmission line. Live stream won't let us do that. Right? We tried. It's not going to work within the parameters of their compression technology. So we already tried that. That was with uh, developers from live streams. Just not going to happen. So, um, we developed our own compression software. And so one of our main focuses is, is getting those, the networks to go out. We have video compression software that we have. We have audio compression software. Uh, we have the framework that all of that's going to be, um, we'll, we'll, well, some of it's launched already, but most of it will be launched at the same time. So when we start, uh, when you guys see video from COT, it'll be our own video compression software. Right, It is compliant with the standards that are out there as far as video compression is concerned. But we control uh, what package is sent, uh, what, what is uh, multiplexed and what is not, which is important. Right? It also means that because we are outside the standard of what most people are used to um, and we control our own standard, we did file for a... Um, uh, a new standard of video compression software. So that means it'll be another codec out there and it'll be the COG codec. And that'll be integrated with, you know, all these other devices. So they'll be able to see it too, right? Um, believe it or not, on your phones, you have codecs that are licensed with your iPhones and your phones and your computers and all this, that, and the other. And so a COG codec will be issued with a license to each device like that too. Um, and that's where we are. That's where we are. That's where we are. Somebody says, I think Mike did not count. Yeah, we do that. We do our counting, right? That's precision counting. It is. If you add 40 days to February 19th, you come out Saturday, March 30th. March 30th. It'll happen every time. That's what we, you know, I've. When you verify dates, date adding, subtracting, all that good stuff, when you're dealing with dates, it's good to have a date calculator uh, from the uh, Gregorian uh, uh, calendar, right? Uh, date calculator for the Hebrew dates and ancient Hebrew dates and Aramaic Hebrew dates and all that. We have all those. I wrote those because it's important to me to track certain things, right? I'm quirky like that. Very quirky. Very quirky. Anyway. Um, 
shortly. I know I'm going to have to go over something tomorrow, but it is Thursday, and so I won't go over something tonight. But we're going to go back into Revelation today because we're coming to the close of Revelation, right? We're coming to the parts where we do the summaries of Revelation. So anybody who was in this Revelation study who is still a bit fuzzy about any of the content in between, don't worry about it because we're going to go right back. We're going to go once we get that summary out there, everything will be condensed. Now, I have to tell you guys, I go with what the Bible says. I know that there are much more experienced individuals out there with the word of God. Right? I'm the guy in the bushes. So I go with what the Lord has given me. I have to do that. I'm bound to do that. I have to be truthful to what the Lord has given me. Okay? Truthful. I have to be um, very faithful with that. Right? We're going to have a summary in the book of Revelation, which will depict, it'll be, um, some of it's written, some of it will be in uh, graphical form, but it will give you an idea, a good idea of what goes where. Uh, it, it is by no means charted out some type of a timing thing. That's not what the deal is. It'll be charted out. Some of it will be, uh, especially like the trumpets, right? They should go into one big, one big area. I'm going to give it to you like the Lord gave it to me to give it to you. I'm going to do that. I'm going to be obedient to him, right? Now, I, I can tell you right now, some of what the Lord gave me did not make sense when he gave it to me, but it does now. It absolutely does now. And so often with the Lord, he will give you something if you can remain faithful to it. Later on, it's going to fall into place perfectly. Hmm? Perfectly. Somebody said, I guess that also releases KD files. Yes, it does. Everything starts releasing, guys. Everything is. And again, don't get yourselves hyped up in the KD files with any preconceived notions. I will not. The KD files do not align with popular topics. They do not. Okay, they don't do that. That is from uh, uh, some of the KD files are recommended for folks, you know, not really to go in if certain things have happened to you. Um, but they're not stories that you would expect. They're not. The hope of the KD files is that you guys have some insight into things. Or, for example, NASA, right? Most people know that NASA utilizes dark iconography on everything they do, right? And in fact, the Air Force does too. In fact, the Army does too. In fact, the Navy does too. Dark iconography. You guys know that, right? So our armed forces pays homage to ancient deities, to space programs, right? They honor ancient deities somebody said have you studied bible codes i've looked into that but i will not cover bible codes the lord did not see if the lord does not give me something i'll never go into an area the lord did not give me okay do i believe bible codes could be real of course i do right? god thinks in so many different directions you know he, he just he's like that but if god did not give me something specifically i will not cover it I have no experience with it. I have to have experience with those things the Lord gives me, right? It is disingenuous of me to cover any subject that I would ever get from somebody else. I have to have hands-on. Then I'll talk about it. If I don't have hands-on, I have no business touching it, right? So I can't do that. I know people do research and they come up with some fascinating things. I don't do what I do to be fascinating. That's not why I'm doing this. This is going to be life or death of the soul. And that's already happening. Souls are perishing. Just in case, you know, you, you want to be reminded of that. You have people out there that are, that they're not doing too well. They're just not doing too well. That does not sit well with me. Most people are fine. Say, you know, if an evil people, evil person dies, and they'll say, that's what that person gets. I'm not that way. I'm, that's a tragedy to me. That's what that is. If an evil person out there dies and they die in their sin, that's a tragedy to me. That's, that's tragic because I could have done more. Somebody else could have done something. Somebody could have done something greater than what they did. So I'm never complacent with that. I'm not one of those people. I'm not. Just, just so you know that. 
Okay, so when it comes to Bible codes and uh, certain areas that God did not give me anything to do with those uh, areas, I will not cover that ever. Okay, if the Lord did not give it to me, I have no business touching it, period. I can't touch it. I can only touch those things the Lord has given me. Okay? All right? Somebody said my math was off. I was thinking 29th is close enough. It is. Because if you count the 19th as the one day, you know, what I did was it, most of what I do is through code anyway, so it gives a higher level of precision. The 29th is fine. All right? That's fine. Because the 29th through the 30th is going to be the closing period, that 24-hour closing period of that 40-day mark. All right, so you're still fine. You're still fine. You're still fine. All right. And Israel is making uh, lots of moves out there. They are. There's some things about Israel that uh, I do pray that certain families will uh, not, not uh, conceal some things anymore. Just, just so you know, in Israel, there are certain families that control specific things, right? And, and you know, some of us folks, we have roots that go back to uh, Israel, right? So we have family in Israel. and um, But those families are entrusted with uh, very specific things. And at certain times, uh, they'll be releasing everything. Everything in the dark is going to be brought to the light. Now, this includes darkness itself. Not only the good things, but the dark things, right? It is imperative that not one of you is is encapsulated or chained up by darkness as these as we go into this new time. It is imperative that you be free. It is imperative that you be free, right? Many have struggled with being free, right? Some people have struggled in the mind about being free. This is not a time to be chained to anything. It's a time for you to see what freedom is so that when things are disclosed, you have the freedom of movement to back away from things that you're not locked in to this thing over here, that thing over there, right? It is imperative that you're free. Mankind, I'll say, right now, today, I'll say mankind has not encountered evil, but they soon will. You can think of the worst thing you ever experienced in your life. And I would say to you, you saw a, a representation of darkness. But as far as seeing darkness, no. No. No one ever forgets when they see darkness. It will paralyze every cell in your body. It'll stick with you. And a person who has seen true evil will never depart from Christ. And no one can ever make them do it. Because they have an understanding that outside of the light of Christ is death itself. And I'm not talking about death of the body. That's an easy thing. Nobody cares about the death of the body, those who have seen true evil. They don't care about the death of the body. They don't. They look a bit deeper, right? Death of your soul. That takes on a whole new meaning. A whole new meaning. But darkness will rise. Keep in mind also, a beastly kingdom is rising. And it is given power. And it will overcome. And it will accomplish. And it will prosper. You know how people get in their minds, they say, well, evil should not prosper, this, that, the other. No, God prophesied that a beast kingdom would rise. And it would have power. And it would prosper. We can't forget about that. This Antichrist, things are going to be given into his hand. And whatever he sets out to do is going to prosper. Righteousness will seem to suffer. You've got to get ready for that. This will be a time when it looks like righteousness is going to be, they're going to be the ones, right, that are held back. And evil will be pushed forward. Mm-hmm. Got to get yourselves ready. Got to get your mind right and ready for these things. For example, some of you, some people are terrified about the economic situation in the world. Well, that's fine. But you better get ready to do things electronically. Right? Now, you're doing things electronically right now. Right now. Very seldom 
does a person really handle cash like they used to, right? Very seldom because they order online. They do things online, right? Right? In, <clears throat> there are some countries who have already passed a bill for their digital currencies. That has happened in the last six days. Countries have already passed their bills for digital currency. And you do realize this is a consolidation effect. This is an absolute control effect. Something else you might want to know. Because the beast is rising. But he will have his kingdom and his citizens rise first. They're already setting up to have his ceremonies. There will be sacrifices. There will be sacrifices. In order to be able to see these sacrifices, believe me, you have to be a simpleton in the mind. You can't read into the propaganda. You have to take a step back and see what's actually happening. All the while, you're going to notice, you're going to notice God's people are going to begin to behave differently. And I'm talking about those in Israel. They're going to begin to do things a bit differently. They're going to get that nudge in the spirit that was spoken of in the Old Testament. They're going to operate differently. They're going to have a resolve about them. This is their time. They know what they have to go through. Right? They know what they have to go through. All, the, all those folks over there, they know exactly what they have to go through. It's already prophesied. And God's prophecies do not fail. They know. We know some of what we have to go through if we can actually believe it. The dust storms are coming. And it will be red dust. Intermingled. The standard dust. We're not talking about the Sahara dust. The earth will be pummeled first. Then when it gets real bad, the others will show up. The ancient ones who begin to reveal themselves. Right now, they're implanted everywhere. When they reveal themselves, they're going to mess up people's paradigm of what reality is. Your reality should not be moved at all. A great shaking is coming. Somebody says, how far away? Here, here's a problem. Here's a problem. People should have been preparing for this four years ago. That's a problem. Four years ago was the opportune time. Almost like the last bracket to really start getting a person prepared, which means right now we have to do a quick work. A quick work. And I pray the Lord does want two in your lives. A quick work. You see, we as humanity... We have taken advantage of God's grace and mercy. We have. He's given us freedom. And in that freedom, let me tell you what we really did. And don't let me offend you. But what we really did was we gave ourselves time. Did we not? We came up with everything to attempt to enjoy the world. Giving ourselves time on God's things. The crunch is coming like an exam. You know, when an exam comes, and you know you're not ready for that exam, you start to crunch your learning. You have no time for anybody else. You start to really crunch. I mean, you hunker down, you anchor yourself, you're trying to learn everything at one time and it gets overwhelming. You go through emotional periods and everything else because the clock is ticking and every time you look at the clock, it's closer to exam time. Right? You will be able to see a clock. You're not going to like it. You will not like it. What we should have begun to prepare for. There, there, for example, there have been families who should have moved four years ago. They, they should have listened to the Lord. They should have, but they were looking for confirmation. God gave them confirmation. We don't want to see the confirmation when, when you need, when the Lord gives you confirmation internal by the Holy Spirit, people start speaking in consensus and you need something else. What that really means is you don't want to do anything. 
You don't want to do it. You don't want to give up what you built to go into the unknown. See, people have a problem with that. They don't want to go into the unknown, so they will not leave Egypt. In this case, Egypt is going to be fully destroyed. And agony will be the voice that comes from Egypt. Those who go forward in the wilderness, and they do so with the voice of God, those are the ones that will be embraced. Those who stay in Egypt because they did not have enough confidence, enough proof to go anywhere else. They will endure what Egypt endures. Let's go ahead and face it, guys. We have been trying to lead our own lives in the absence of confirmation. Let's go ahead and face it. So in other words, if a person didn't get confirmation, they would keep on doing what they were doing, right? People forget about 2010. How many of you had dreams of water between the years of 2003 and 2010? How many people had a dream of a flood? How many people who never considered a flood had dreams of floods during those years? How many? How many? I can almost guarantee you just about all of you, just about all of you, had a dream about some sort of flood or water, and we're not listening. Why don't we listen? Listen to me carefully. Ready? You had that dream about the water or the flood. Even those of you who do not contemplate such things. Can't you see what's happened over the last five years? Do you not know that water damage has consumed trillions of dollars? People's lives are destroyed because of water damage. There are insurance companies that will no longer cover flood damage. The flood, the flood didn't come all at one time. It just keeps coming. Can't you see it? God showed you we were going to have a water problem. That water in essentially your dream. It could be said that your dream meant we're going to be overwhelmed with water. Weren't we overwhelmed with water? Hmm? We were overwhelmed with water. The problem is people have sensationalized so much. But if it's not sensational, if it's not, you know, just captivates everybody and kills half the world, people don't pay attention. Every year, the floods are coming. Every year, the floods keep coming. The floods get worse and worse and worse and worse. They are eroding the infrastructure. Buildings are collapsing. Structures are damaged big time. By the floods. You know what comes next, don't you? Because after you have, this is, a lot of people started having dreams of water, you know, just out of the blue. Dreams of, you know what comes next? After the dreams of water, there was something intermingled with those dreams you guys were having. How many of you started having dreams of people you know that were acting strange. Hmm? How many of you have dreams of people you know that were acting odd, strange in the dream? It's almost like they were they were the same person, but they were somewhat out of character. It was strange. My mind. So we can hear. We just don't take heed. People since that time have been going through notable changes. In fact, there's an epidemic, a mental epidemic in the earth right now. Did you know that? It's an epidemic. It's a plague. There are too many people who are changing in the world. It's because they're, they're, they're pressure cookers ready to blow. Right now, hostilities are bogged up so much. You can feel the hostility. You know what? It's so bad these days. You do not dare go into the street and yell out your favorite political candidate. You can't do it. You could actually be shot in these days. 
people can go from nice to hateful in seconds. And you know what? The Lord has given you all this before it ever took place. He did, in fact, give you warning. And for those of you who cannot dream, you know people who have. People who don't dream have analytical minds. They do. If God were to give you a dream like that, it would mess up how you normally operate. So don't feel left out if you don't dream of things like that. Don't, because you notice the conversation of others. Between that, after 2012 failed, everybody felt a heaviness right after 2012. You guys remember that? After 2012, there was a heaviness. Many people had dreams that they had to use their weapons. Or their guns were of no effect. Bullets would not work. What the Lord is doing, your ammunition, is not going to help you. The Lord gives warning. But are we listening? Because every time we do, we, we get that clear path. What do we start doing? Let me, give you the, let me give you the pattern of what happens. You reach a point of spiritual maturity to a specific level. You begin to see, consider, and you're almost ready to act on things. And then something in your life takes a turn you did not expect. In fact, all of you have had this multiple times. In essence, you've been supernaturally attacked. When you are supernaturally attacked, you're forced, you're forced to survive. In other words, all your energy, right? Everything gets poured back into your cells. Many of you had to protect yourselves for the last six years. That's all you could do was to make sure you were protected. You had no time for anything outside of yourselves. You had to protect yourselves. That's what you thought you had to do. It was almost as if if you dropped your guard, some weird issue, problem, or person would take would overtake you instantly. And so many of you found yourselves watching, watching out for everything to protect yourselves. You were tied up in it. You couldn't do anything else. All these different stages. Now you're noticing the whole world. The whole world is interested in two things. They want to establish something so new. It does not leave a bad taste in your mouth. It's, they want something not connected with any of the old stuff. Do you know that? People want something that's not connected to what caused them stress, anxiety, and pain. The kings of the earth have joined forces to do just that. Now we're in a time of massive dedications to darkness. Hmm. Somebody said, Micah, keep having dreams about zombies. Let me ask you this. Before you ever heard about zombies, did you ever dream about zombies? In, for the military... Zombie drills, zombie simulations, or simulations for disease. That's what it's for. Disease, right? For contagions. The idea is once a person's infected, right? The infection rate goes up with each person that comes in proximity to, the, to that infected person. So, if you have simulations... Just like the, you know, the movies with zombies. Once you have simulations like that, you can actually begin to see containment strategies. What works and what does not. Okay. Does that mean they're not real zombies? <clears throat> no, that's not what that means. You may not know this either. There are certain times when you come across people who are not alive, but they're highly active. They do not respond to external stimuli. There have been people who have been shot multiple times, right? 
by an M60 or something of the like, 7.62 caliber round. That's a pretty big round. And they were still functional. They did not cry out. They did not yell. But they continued forward to the target. This happens more and more every single day. Every day this is happening. Now, from what I saw, they do respond to one thing. If a person says, goes up to one of those things, or they see one, they say, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, but that person is not rooted and grounded in Christ, that thing will not take heed to what that person said. If a person is truly rooted in Christ, that thing will avoid them at all costs. Without that person uttering a thing, it will avoid them at all costs. E evoking the name of Jesus will not work for these things. If the Lord is not within you, if you don't stand with Christ, they can see the authority you have or don't have. So can the other things that are coming. They know what you have and what you don't have. They know what you believe in and what you don't believe in. And people will have no defense against them. Evoking the name of Christ won't work. You're either going to be in Christ or not. And they'll overcome by sheer numbers. These people that don't fall, they're fully taken over. They don't respond to stimuli at all. They're fully taken over by something else. And in every single case, they hiss. Now, you know, people don't hiss. People do not hiss. So let me introduce you guys into something in the KD files. Something was found a long, long time ago. It was deeply looked into. It involves a mammal reptilian war. A war between mammals and reptilians. You'll not hear this anywhere now that I said it. Somebody else is going to say something too. But those type things are in the KD files. They are intimate parts of this Earth's history. Intimate parts. Most people who are who, who read about the fallen angels, right, and their children, their offspring, they forget that the, the offspring in these things were flesh and blood. You already have examples of them. All of you are familiar. With the, with the bones of the, with the, of the Nephilim, you're familiar with it. You've already seen the bones of the Nephilim. You're already familiar with, with the offspring, right, of these things. You're already familiar with it. You just have the wrong name for it. Even in this day and age, right, there's certain places of mystique people talk about like Dulce, New Mexico, or something like that. Things that people have hunted for to see if they can find some clue of some, you know, external life form or something like that. Do they have an operation in these places? Are they working with, you know, things they shouldn't work with, this, that, and the other? You don't want to know the details of that. But it's still a war against the reptiles and humans. And we're not talking about reptile people like... Um, there are certain figures everybody knows about, and especially among those who have been in the certain areas of operation. They know about certain authors. And these authors have taken it uh, to, a, to a high degree, right? Now, some of that stuff is stuff. But when you're talking about the character of these things, it's almost like they are. They're pretty close. Right, they're pretty close. Never forget the power of Christ is real. And what is the power of Christ? I'm referring to salvation. That's what I'm referring to. You know when the Bible has said to work out your salvation with fear and trembling? What does that mean? You know how people think that if they're saved today, right, they're going to be saved always. 
if they were going to be saved always, then why would the Bible tell us to work out our salvation with fear and trembling? See that? See other words? My goodness gracious. All right, guys, we got some things to go over. Wake up. This is Wednesday. I'm trying to be calm. I am being calm. Listen, I do not mind questions uh, today. I don't mind that today. All right. Somebody says, do you see the calling of millions of people around the world uh, coming this year? My understanding is that most will die, will be hybrids, clones, and some think people would be fast. Some will be 100% here. No. No, I see something totally different. The Lord has shown me something totally different, right? I, I, I can tell you right now, personally, personally, listen, personally, the Lord has given me specific things. I am careful to stay in those specific areas. And if you take notice, I'm a, I'm a person who has lots of ambitions, right? I stay within certain topics. Have you noticed that? Certain topics. And I'm quite patient, right? I'm also very, I'm a human being, so that means I worry. I worry about you all. I worry about people. I do. I worry that people are going to buy the fantasy. I don't want to see anybody end up in torment. I really don't. This is about fighting. Fighting with your last breath for the sake of somebody else, that they that they may truly turn to Christ themselves. Right? That they may. Now, the Lord did not give me any ending of anything like that for this year. One of the major things on my heart is that I know that if people take part in the violence appointed for this year, Everyone who takes part in that violence will not escape the penalty. And the penalty is cruel. And, and people, nobody can tell me that cruelty does not exist in the earth. How many of you have had a toothache, but you're a Christian? You had a toothache, so you know what pain feels like, right? You know what pain feels like. Everybody knows about uh, a toothache, right? You know about a toothache. And, and many of you know about toothaches and you're believing Christians. So you know that you can have pain in your life. Right? You know that. You can have pain. Right? So never convince yourself that somehow you can do what you want to do in the world and face no consequences. Please. Please. Please don't deceive yourselves that way. Don't do it. Listen. The people who will be partakers of the misery to come. They will not be able to die. They will have no relief. They're going to be stuck in misery. Those are the days when people will desire to die and death will flee from them. Now, if you knew that for a fact, wouldn't you do everything in your power? To keep people away from those avenues of darkness, the real darkness that people don't see. For example, a lot of people, they look at the big things. It's okay if you murder somebody, you know, you're in danger. If you do this, you're in danger. Yeah, but what about hating someone from your heart? What about getting used to the falsehood of embracing someone when you don't even think about them? What about being disingenuous with conversation. You know when you're having a conversation and you, you make it go a certain direction to elicit a response out of somebody else? You know, sometimes people feel devious or even honorary. Listen, you, you may not think anybody knows this, but the Holy Spirit knows you, right? The Holy Spirit knows everything about you. The Holy Spirit knows everything about me. The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God poured out on all flesh. And anybody who operates by the Holy Spirit can know anything about anybody. If the Lord allows that person to know, I, it is a known fact that people are honorary sometimes, not all the time, sometimes. It is a known fact people fight their flesh. Ideas come into your head, insults, things that you laugh about, little jokes when no jokes should enter into your mind about other people. And if you're not careful, that can degrade who you are as a person. Because how many times did we entertain such things? 
and not rebuke such things. Remember that. So, so yes, we can stumble big time, right? We can get ourselves all messed up. And if we're not careful, we can become hardened in the heart, cut off from all real compassion, and we'll end up suffering big time in this earth. Nobody wants to see that happen. Nobody. God knows I don't. Right? I don't want to see people physically suffer. I've seen enough children suffer. I've seen enough families suffer. I've seen some of the dark things in this world, what man can do. Now, the Lord said, the Lord said, that if you're found within him, he is your covering. But to be found within him is for you to absolutely agree with him. For you to be obedient to him. Not by force, but by choice. Hopefully we understand that. Okay, I'm going to take a break. I'm going to be right back and check out some of the some of the things on these uh, nets, guys. And listen, listen, we we have a lot of uh, we have a lot of traffic. We do. We have a lot of traffic with COT, right? So I have to play this. I have to do this balancing act with the traffic. Keep in mind, we have chat rooms going, and that takes quite a bit. And we have chat rooms going all the time. We can't just turn those chat rooms off. You guys have a, the chat room in COT, right? For example, that has, you know, the design of COT on it. These other chat rooms, uh, it's up to them what design they put on it. We provide the architecture. So it's a blank chat room that they can then add their own colors and pictures and all this and the other two, right? But they have a lot of people on there chatting. They use their chat rooms for a host of, of, of reasons. And some of them have some pretty big audiences. Some of them do. There, there's one chat room when it starts up. There's no less than 20,000 people on there every single time they start up. They start up about three or four times a week, right? There's another chat room that has no less than 500 people in it at a time, and that one's in Germany. That one's a German chat room, and they're always chatting in there, right? These chat rooms are open, right, so that the, the gospel can go everywhere. These are for Christian communities. These chat rooms are not for anything secular. They are for Christian communities. That's what they're for. Right? And nobody can ever force me to make it available to everybody. It is not available to everybody. It is available to those who honor Christ. That's who it's available to. It is not available to anybody who does not honor Christ. Some say a question, but strange COT media player seems to be slower, but at different rates today. Yes, it's going to fluctuate. It's going to tune and balance itself based on the traffic and everything else. Okay. That is done. Every time I tune the uh, server, we don't want to go over uh, what we're allotted. Because if that happens, we won't be able to transmit at all. And that means our chat rooms will stop. We don't want to do that. Right. We want to want to maintain believe it or not and it's is now i'm just telling you guys this but over the course of years right the traffic on the chat rooms has grown but everything else has withdrawn right our main product is the chat room communications have communications for people that has grown big time big time Right, so I have to constantly tune to make sure that we don't or, or that that major product still functions and operates I have to make sure of that. So, um, over the years, right, as um, the, their traffic and organizations grow, as they use this more and more, um, uh, naturally, they're going to require more bandwidth, right? Everything is tuned appropriately. And and so, we want to keep that going, right? That's a, People depend on that. They really do. They depend on that. They depend on the chat rooms. They really do depend on the chat rooms. These big companies who have these chat rooms, right, they utilize these co-op chat rooms. They have trillions of dollars, billions of dollars to play with, right? Well, that takes a lot of bandwidth, guys. When you're doing that, it does. It takes a lot. And it may seem like it's not, you know, critical or something like that, but it is to those who chat on them, right? We host hundreds of people for, for or hundreds of organizations right now for chatting. We host them, right? 
And uh, we want to continue to do that. Soon we'll have video. We'll have the whole whole package. And we want to strategically have that together that the communication of the gospel never stops. We want to do that until we just simply can't do that anymore. It is fault tooth and nail, Allah. It is. But we want to continue to do that. And we also, we have major launches in COT, this website, the COT website, that we have major launches to, to actually start happening here, you know, in COT so that we can utilize more and more tools. And as you guys use these tools, they seem beneficial to you. We want to afford those same tools to everybody else, especially with our translation and, and some of the dictionaries that we have. The code that looks up Hebrew, uh, well, um, for example, if you're reading something and people start talking about a specific word, that word is automatically going to be searched, tagged, and put up there in the Hebrew, right? Um, so that everybody can benefit by, you know, somebody's effort of looking up a word. If we were to have a conversation in the chat room and it was a certain word kept popping up, the chat room will take that word and post it to the top, right, to the top of the uh, is another list box that pops up with a meaning so that all of us know it. So the chat room becomes a very good learning tool, right? It also has modes to it, like Bible study mode, broadcasting mode, you know, all these different modes I'm putting in there so that we can maximize that tool for, you know, every occasion. Anything a, a person who loves the Lord would need uh, to quickly get up and going, to chat, to communicate, to get everybody consolidated. We want to put that in there. We're going to add those things in there. So um, that takes a lot, yes. But to host that, we have to be very careful because Satan is sneaky. We all know that the Lord allows Satan to operate, right? The Lord did not promise us smooth sailing all the way to the end. He did promise us opposition. And it's, 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 we have to be intuitive. Um, Knowing that Satan is going to try and obstruct everything we do, right? Knowing that we're going to have seasons that will try us. They're going to try us. But we have to simply maintain also the USA is starting their breakdown. So is the Middle East. We know that the, what the USA is about to go through. Many of us do. We know what the USA is about to go through, right? We know that people in the USA, most of them have cell phones, right? So a lot of time has gone into tapping into technology to allow people to communicate in alternative ways during very critical times, right? It seems somebody said, what, what was that? Somebody had one. Somebody had one. Oh, let's see. Somebody said, it seems people feel great. Others get sick when these uh, solar waves come through. Well, women are tied to the sun. A woman's biological cycles are timed exactly like the sun. If the sun changes or alters its seasons in the slightest way, a woman is also altered. Right? When God made these, these planets are precise in what they do. They are. They're precise. The earth is precise in what it does. I mean, with absolute precision. The problem is you have these angry scientists out there that want people to believe their way. Most of these arrogant scientists, if they can't see it, they speak against it, right? Now, every single year, these mainstream scientists find out new facts, thus they have to void what they thought the year before. They do it every year, every single year. But don't be fooled. Here's how, here's how you can be fooled. Men have made computers which is a product of many different disciplines. And because it works and because it does things that amaze us, we believe that the entirety of the scientific community is responsible for what we're utilizing. Wrong. Wrong. This is, the, a, a computer is based on a skill set, engineering, things of that nature, right? These other scientists operate under the umbrella of these successful scientists who have given us computers and things like that, right? They operate under that umbrella to try and make people somehow believe and people fall for it that, you know, just because a computer works, then you should give afford them all your attention. They're going to be right about everything else. Wrong. 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 
They did not warn anybody about the weather, did they? Who warned anybody about the weather? Did anybody warn anybody about the weather 10 years ago? Huh? Did anybody warn anybody about the weather 10 years ago? Where were all the scientists then? Did they warn you 10 years ago? Did they tell you guys about the near-Earth asteroid program itself? So let me, let, me, let me see if I can explain this to you. Imagine yourself standing outside. Hold your thumb up. Hold your thumb up in the air and look up at the sky. The part of the sky that your thumb covers is what they're able to see in the NEO program. They cannot see the rest. They didn't tell you that, did they? They didn't tell you that what they can see are asteroids that are of a large size. Only. So, how many asteroids have they tracked? Point one of point one percent of what's up there. So that means one hundredth, you might as well say one hundred of a one hundredth percent of what's up there. That's it. That is less than point one percent of what's up there. Here's the problem. Can they track asteroids? The size of a school bus. Nope. Can they track asteroids smaller than that? They failed at it. What are they looking at? They're looking at things about a half mile wide. That's what they're looking at. And again, if you hold your thumb up to the heavens, whatever your thumb covers up is what they have been able to track. They cannot track anything else. Did they tell you about the satellite they shot down two days ago? Nope. What about the satellites they've been shooting down just about every single week? Nope. They won't tell you about these things. And you don't know about these things. And because they won't tell you and you don't know, that it's not part of your world. It's not part of how you see things or how even how you interpret prophecy. It's not part of it. Things are fragile. Very fragile. Hmm? We're going to be overwhelmed soon. And it'd be a good thing if you guys were ready. For real. Because at some point, all the entertainment is going to come to a screeching halt. And then men will entertain very real fears. So is it why is NASA launching sounding rockets into the shadow of the moon during April 8th? <laughs> well, you, did, you guys have access to articles, right? Don't they say to study anomalies or something like that? I just want you guys to be in the know to understand why do they always dedicate anything they fly into the air to ancient deities? Well, let me give you a hint. First of all, if they don't, it's not going to fly. It's not going to be successful. They also will not be honoring what's in control here now. That means something is in control. The Bible teaches us about principalities and powers. But do you believe what the Bible is saying about those principalities and powers? Do you believe it? That means there are regional demons appointed over certain spaces and areas. Over your head is no different. Nothing goes into the air. Not into Satan's domain. Without honoring him. I'll be back in a few minutes right here at COT, everybody. I'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We should sound pretty clear right now. We really should sound clear. In fact, it should be very, very clear. Right now, it should be extremely clear. If not, it's going to clear up. It will. It'll clear up. Oh, boy. Okay. Do you guys know who Pete Buttigieg is? 
You guys know who that is? Remember him. Get to know him. Get to know him. Get to know who Pete Buttigieg is. Get to know him. Remember that. Remember I said that. Get to know him. Get to know that guy. Look into him. Get to know him. Revelation. Let's go there. So last time we were reading in Revelation, right? We saw a new heaven and a new earth. I got to try not to listen. Sometimes I get excited reading about Revelation in the wrong parts. Why everybody else is, you know, dreading what's coming. I get excited. I do. I do get excited. Listen, there's nothing, there's nothing better than pouring out your very life for the sake of a vision, the Lord's vision, God's vision, putting your whole, putting all of what you are into it, doing all of what you can, and then seeing the Lord honor his portion of his word according to you. Right? There's nothing better than a hard, work real hard at work all week and pour yourself into it. Right? And then that company honor you with what they said they would give you. There's, there's no greater reward. If you have not experienced that, then you haven't poured yourself out like that. There is nothing better. The greatest movie ever written has a format. And the guy you thought that would not make it, or the gal you thought that would not make it, they give everything that they can give. Right? And everybody's rooting for that person at the end of the movie, right? Keep going, keep going. They're about to give up. They've gone through everything. And it looks like they're not going to make it. There's nothing better than when that person makes it. Right? That's a formula for a movie. That's a formula for books. It is. To have that character go through hell on earth. To make that character seem like, uh, they, they make it seem like that character's not going to make it. The character is not the famous character. Right? It's the underdog. But when they pull through, by the end of the story, by the end of the book, everybody's saying, pull through, keep going, this, that, and the other. Do you not know that the angels in heaven are doing the same to you? The exact same thing they're doing to you. All of what you went through. You know, your life story is like that. In your life story, you it looks like you weren't going to make it. You don't know how, but you continue on. You're being encouraged. That's how you got to this very day. Something in you would speak to you and say, keep going. Didn't it? Hmm? Didn't it? Hmm. We quickly approach the days of great disappointment for the world. Great fulfillment for the saints. But before the fulfillment comes, the truth of your process must also come. Remember, your father works in absolute truth. Absolute truth. All right? Absolute truth. All right. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. This is uh, Revelation 21. We read about that part. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. I find it interesting. That will be put in there. There's no more sea. No more sea. No more sea. John saw a holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Listen, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. I heard a great voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them. So that means right now the tabernacle of God is not with men. It's not with men. Okay. It 
further stays in Revelation 21.3, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them, and be their God. And God shall wipe away all the tears from their eyes. Now, you know what? That's interesting. If God wipes away all the tears of the eyes of those who belong to him, then their process indeed was challenging. Tears in the eyes is a representation of a hard life. And I told you guys a long time ago, when I was 10 years old, something that's really altered my life. It really altered my life. Can you imagine 10 years old? You have some sort, you have a dream. But the dream is not some usual dream. It's too vivid. And you see two lines, two great lines of people, one on the left and one on the right. On the right side, you see people in business attire. They have this small device in their hands. Everybody's looking at this small device, and everybody has something up to their head. They're very busy, very well-dressed, ready for business. Right? On the left... You see people who are worn down, children who have a sad look on their face, parents who have a sad and insecure, worn out look on their face. They're on the left side. And then the people on the left side were given passage. But the people on the right side were told to gather around this, this specific area of which an angel came and told me to back away from There was a door in front of the people, and they were still looking at their devices. And that angel opened the door. It was absolute blackness. Absence of light, the absence of it. Which is worse than a fire, in my opinion. That is worse than, you'd rather have the flames of a fire than to have that emptiness. And no one was pushed into it. The people that stood in front of that door were drawn into it. Like a part of them was inside that area. And they were sucked into it. It would not suck up the righteous. It would not suck up those who were beaten and battered. Because they were arriving. Every second people were arriving. Every second. Those people on the right that were well-dressed conducting their business, they all looked like they were in business attire. That's what they look like. Now, I'm 10 years old, and I'm seeing people on cell phones and tablets at 10. That's impossible. And I told you guys I drew pictures of tablets and, and phones when I was young like that. I remember telling my parents, they're going to have a, on your, on a, they're going to have flat TVs, and the images will look real. Three-dimensional images on people's desks because I saw that <clears throat> these people on the right hand side were so steeped in their own personal business they couldn't even perceive that they were dead they were told to get themselves in front of this door and when the door opened it sucked them in inside this door was nothingness it was blackness and emptiness listen when I say blackness that not like going to sleep and everything gets dark nope I'm talking about the absence of hope, the absence of light, the absence of love, the absence of answers, the absence of everything. And when the door closed, I saw a big table, big table. And I asked that thing with me, I'm going to call it an angel. It could have been something else, but I said, you know, what is this table? And he said, these are they who pray on the earth. And every so often, a person will pop up at this huge table. It was never full. It was only like one or two would pop up. It was never full. One or two would pop up at this huge table. And I just kind of looked at it like, uh, shouldn't more people be praying than one or two popping up? Every time somebody really prayed, they showed up at this table. This huge table they showed up right there. Then I found myself wanting to know what was happening to people here on this earth. 
So I went back to see if you there in the presence, I can only say this, there was a, you were in the presence of truth. You were in the presence of love and wisdom, right? All knowledge, no foolishness, none of that. And it is a transition. It's a transition. There are no other emotions existed. You didn't operate emotionally. You did not. You were in all truth. All, can you imagine that? You're being in all truth. There is a, there's a sensation I cannot convey. I just can't convey it. But being in the presence of all truth is a security you never thought could ever possibly exist. Let's put it that way. I thought about the earth and people on the earth, and then I was on the earth. But I looked around, and the sun was bright like it is today. In fact, back then in that dream, when I had that dream and woke up and recovered over a couple days, the sun looked nothing like the sun in that dream. Today, the sun looks just like that sun in that dream. It is a yellow, fuzzy thing in the sky. Back then, we had the bluest skies. The crisp edges around the sun, we had that. You could look at the sun and squint your eyes and look directly at the sun. You can't do that now. You can't do that now. The trees had no leaves. The grass was there, but it was uh, parched, dry. <laughs> That's when I saw the fires start on the earth, but the earth was empty. It was empty, and people were doing drugs to escape the emptiness. I remember this girl, this woman, who was, she was blaming everybody for everything. She was bl just blaming. Her kids were gone. She would wake up. She would jump in a truck with this guy. They would go to this house where they would do drugs. Women were doing anything to get the drugs, and the guys were getting the drugs and doing anything to the women. They were escaping the emptiness. They had no, no children were on the face of the earth. The earth was empty. It's a place you wouldn't want to be in. And I remember looking at that girl, that woman, her, you know, her skin was messed up and you could tell the drugs really got her. In fact, she looks like some of the people you see now. Back then, they didn't have methamphetamine. They didn't have that back then, all right? She looked just like one of those people on methamphetamine. But something else that gives way to sores on your skin. And I looked her right in the face and she couldn't see me, of course. And instantly I had the wisdom to tell her I understood something. Now listen, this is going to sound funny. I understood the whole plan when I told her what I told her. I let, she couldn't hear me. And I said, listen, your, your blaming, your worry has nothing to do. It has no bearing on why you're here on this earth. And it didn't. It had nothing to do with anything. As to why she was there. She was on earth for a specific reason. And her blaming and her crying and her this and her that had nothing to do with why she was there. In that instance, I knew why people were here on this earth. I knew exactly why they were here. And all of her, all of her blaming, right, people for her children and for her life and this and the other, it had nothing to do, nothing to do with why she was there. That was torment. And those were the days when darkness didn't even come to the earth yet. It was about to unfold. In fact, no one on earth had any idea of how dark it was about to get. Now, a human being would call that time a dark time. But in truth, the darkness had not come yet. That means it'll get worse. There was a gentleman who could not escape from his withdrawal symptoms. 
he couldn't escape from it. See, because back then, listen, God was still merciful back then. Had a person repented, even at that time, they would have been saved. Had a person repented, but they would not repent. And it's much like Revelation when it says they did not repent of their murders or their thefts or their adultery or anything. They didn't repent of it. They were totally different people who wouldn't repent of anything. They would not repent. Many more things I had that uh, episode. And when I got up, I was 10, 10 years old, right? And I get up from there and uh, I'm hearing people talk but it's not matching what they're saying with their mouth. And they, imagine waking up from a dream like that. You remember it intimately, and it impacts you greatly. Something was different with me in that moment. I could listen. People were talking. Their lips were moving, but I was hearing their heart. I was actually hearing the intent of their hearts. I was not hearing what they were saying out of their mouth. And I was freaking people out, freaked my family out. That lasted for a few days. That, that was the first time. The same thing happened again later on in life. The exact same dream. Now listen, the girl, I know who that girl is. The guy in the truck, I know who the guy is. The place where they were at, I know exactly where it is. I know exactly where it is. So, even right now, people are in the earth. And most of what a person is doing is not geared towards salvation. It has nothing to do with why they're put here on this earth. People have made their lives to, to do very little with why they're here on this earth. And people are forging a brand new direction for themselves. They actually believe they're going to have it. But here's the problem. When they don't get it, they start blaming God for everything. They start blaming everybody. Listen to me, folks. If you have us, anybody on this earth, you're blaming for something. I, I request... And you find closure in that right away. If you have a heart of blaming anybody, you will be left in a place of torment. You will. Remember that you are created. Man did not create you. You are created. You are sent here to this earth. Remember that you're not your flesh. Those who cling to the flesh will become one with it. And when the flesh suffers, so will they. Remember those things. My goodness. Because when things begin to unfold, it's just going to be too late for a lot of people. It's going to be too late. Remember that. If you're not careful, you start listening to the world and, and all these interesting things because people come up with the most fascinating theories and things. If you're not careful, you'll buy the lie of the world. They will redefine your purpose in life and you'll end up forging a brand new path in life that has nothing to do with why you're here. Right? Remind yourself that God knows what he's doing. When something unfortunate happens in your life, say God knows what he's doing. Remind yourself that he knows what he's doing. If you've lost a child, start seeing the truth of it. That child is with the Lord. Now, if they're over the age of, of, of accountability, always
is happening in your heart that everybody must make their decision. Be thankful to God for honoring you to bring a life here in this earth. But always remember, everybody must make their own decision. And they can never be forced to make their decision one way or the other. Everyone must choose by way of freedom. Hopefully you guys can uh, remember that. Somebody said, what's the age of accountability? That's when a person, there is no set age, right? So hear me on this. That's when a person really makes that distinction of, of wholeness and emptiness of right and wrong. When guilt kicks in, I mean real heavy guilt kicks in, when their conscience weighs a billion pounds, now they have comprehension to understand what they're doing, how it affects somebody else. That's the age of accountability. And it alters these days, but it was a set day in times past. And for the most of you, Satan will get very close to you before the age of accountability, before you actually say yes to your father, he'll get very close to you in an effort to cause you to see love a different way. Don't forget those things so that no one can zap you of your destiny. Also remember something else. You're predestined with the Lord. You are. You're predestined. You live in the days right now these are going to be extraordinary times. If you're rooted and grounded, you won't be taken by what you'll see in the heavens. You won't be taken by the governmental structural changes that will take place. You won't be taken by these political wars. These, you guys may not like this, but God knows exactly what he's doing. He already knows about Biden. He knows about Trump. Who do you guys think put Biden in his seat? Or, or a man. How many of you think, how many of you think that uh, God put Trump and Biden in their respective seats when they were president? How many believe that? This is one thing we can't do, right? I've noticed this. And, and, of course, if you're biased, it can easily happen. Try not to believe that God comes through on those things we like. But somehow the devil came through on what we don't like. God knows what he's doing in both situations. Try not to be the one that curses somebody else because of the job they hold. Try not to join in with the world. Right? When they call out to crucify someone and you just blindly jump in and say the same thing to gain trust of the crowd. There is no law anywhere that says you have to give everybody your opinion. Remember those things. That way in your life no darkness will ever have power over you. So what happens in disobedience? God has already told us darkness will have power to harm you. And again, these things are normally not believed until, uh, unfortunately, until they happen. Right? You guys remember yesterday when I said that the um, barrier was breached, broken into? You'll have a greater understanding of that. So I said that yesterday, right? Not today, I said that yesterday, right? You guys remember that. But never be fascinated by somebody else's insights. I'll tell you something. All of you have an ability to see beyond sight. What you must never do is seek praise because of it. It can't be in your heart. It can't be, you can't be that person that will utilize 
something that the Lord gives you because you think it, it, it's like this. Listen, suppose somebody gives you a gun, a loaded weapon, and then you holster that weapon. All of a sudden, some criminal jumps out and he's holding one of your friends hostage, right? Now, the person who gave you that gun, they want you to know that they will instruct you as to when to use that gun, Okay. You're to never use it on your own. You're to always use that gun when you are instructed to use it. Otherwise, you don't touch it, right? But suppose that those instructions are given to you and a person with a gun, they, they, you have the gun, but then all of a sudden somebody comes out and takes your friend from behind and they're threatening to kill your friend. What would you do? You can't be one of those people that's going to say, well, surely... I got to defend this person. You can't be the one to take your weapon out when you were given instructions not to touch it. Right? It's on you, but you're given instruction not to touch it. You, can, you can't be the person who's going to pull out that firearm because you think you need to do it. You can't be that person. Right? You can't be that person. You got to be responsible with what the Lord gives you. We cannot use the weapons of warfare that the Lord gives us when we think we should use them. Because everything the Lord will arm you with comes with instructions. If you're one of those who would wait upon the Lord, you're going to be armed from head to toe. You will. But the Lord cannot trust you with a weapon simply because you may see it's needed and remember we walk by faith not by sight we were not moved by what we see we're moved by what we're instructed by the instructions we receive of the Lord that means we're moved by truth which is the voice of the Lord not by the lie the lie is everything you see with your eyes That's the lie. If you can make sure of that, you're going to be armed. There are lots of people in this day and age that will not be armed because they cannot be trusted. The Lord desires all of us to be armed. The Lord desires all of us to be protected from head to toe. The problem is we overstep our bounds and when we think we need to do something we start doing it we won't wait for instruction that's okay for a skill set or something like that that is not okay if you have a heavenly gift if you have a heavenly weapon you cannot use it when you think it needs to be used you guys got that one mm -hmm. a storm is coming you all remember about that storm in the island and the people fled. But the people that were left on the island during the storm were tested. The test was about staying within righteousness no matter what. That was the time the dark one came in the middle of the storm. And everybody had to face Lucifer himself. Any vulnerability in you will be exploited. But know this, when God has your, your vulnerabilities exploited and they begin to surface, God does this so he can pull it up, root and all. He must show you the truth of you. Have you noticed in the word of God that God shows people the truth of them? God showed Jeremiah who Jeremiah was. God showed David who David was, didn't he? He did. God shows us who we are, right? Now, when they begin to surface, because of what's happening in the world, when they begin to surface, it's because the Lord will uproot them forever for his people. When they are uprooted, you will not have a hindrance against the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit in operation fully within your vessel, that's when the wondrous things return. You will truly be a vessel 
powers of the living God in this earth for the sake of other people. Hospitals are not going to be readily available, so those who are left will have healing hands. But you cannot heal who you think needs to be healed. You must operate by instruction with great courtesy. It must be a person's choice. Remember that. In the, these are the end days. These are not the beginning days. These are not the middle days. These are the end days. And it's important that you be armed. With the truth, with the Lord's true things, not theoretical things, the true things. Again, if we can be trusted with what the Lord gives us, we're going to be good. So, having said that, please don't get caught up in the violence. Please don't let this political stuff Thank you. Because destruction is coming. And if something can get through you, it can get to the rest of those in your household. Please know that. Somebody else says, Micah, that exact dream of people on an island, a huge storm brewing, my husband and I, were the only ones that were left. Yeah. You guys are going to notice a lot of people giving over to this political stuff. Right? Of course, it's up to the individual, but I wouldn't be a part of it. You can vote, yes, vote. Do not take part in the violence against others. Don't do that. And I'll say it again. I'm one of those people. I do not agree with people being lost. So when a person is going down the proverbial toilet bowl of the world, right? I am not the one who will say goody gumdrops on you. I try to reach right there in that nasty water to pull out as many as possible. It's not some heroic thing. It's what I actually believe in. <laughs> Folks, any do you guys have any questions of me? I know it's a little off today, but it's okay. I know it's a little off. I know it's a little off. But don't worry, we have a couple of broadcasts uh, before tomorrow night. Yes, yeah, a couple. We have a couple. Anybody have any questions of me other than asking about the fatigue in the last uh, few days? Well, actually, the last few months. So it says, how do you know if you already been turned over to a reprobate mind? If you are turned over to a reprobate mind, you will not believe in Jesus of Nazareth. You will not agree with the gospel. You will not agree with salvation. You won't. That's how you know. Okay, who, who, uh, let's see, um, you guys can get that, right? How do you know if you've been turned over to a reprobate mind? We you already got that one. What happened with the Baltimore Bridge? Well, isn't it funny how that would happen right near the closing date of our date? I'll tell you what, I, I gave you guys a little bit last night. I'm not one to, I never, I happen to know things first, right? Uh, and of course, with that one, a hunt was taking place to try and stop it. It was. The people who, the, the let's just say the circumstances that worked up to this thing. Uh, will most certainly be on display. All right? It'll be on display. But uh, there are a few issues with it and problems with it. And if I if I 
I went into something right now before anybody else did their, you know, their, their investigations. It would, it could cause some of you to look at certain people in, in a bad light. I don't want to be responsible for making you see anybody in a bad light. The Lord's truth is the Lord's truth. Would it surprise anybody to know if, if a person got involved in something like that? Suppose that person and the crowd and whoever else that was involved that has no belief in Yahshua HaMashiach. I suppose they have no belief in the Lord at all. No belief. Um, and they were involved in something like that. Well, the mind, you know, your interpretation of events would start going all over the place. And the accusations would begin to pour, but they pour because of the seed I sowed. So I'm very careful in having the facts. Now, electronically, that boat was under the control of Baltimore. And it was full of hazardous uh, materials. It was. And those materials are not leaking save two containers that are held behind a barrier. At any rate, it'll be worked through. You know, they're, they're going to work through this thing. Was it terrorism? I have to give you the whole spill of the whole thing. And then you'll see it. Is America under attack? That's the real question. Is America under attack? That should be the real question. The boat is only one component of something much greater. It won't be the end. It's not the end. Somebody wants to wear the USA down. The only way to wear the USA down is to compromise the place itself, right? They want to wear you down. They want to wear the USA down. They're not going to stop until they do that. And ultimately, they want this place burning. They do. Somebody says, Michael, I went and re-enlisted, or re-listened to the broadcast about the tablet. You never told us. What was on the tablet? Oh, no, I, I, I didn't. In that, it was a dream about a, 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 listen, it was a tablet. and Somebody was presenting this tablet to leadership. And on that tablet were plans. Plans of people who want to pay America back. And they were presenting that to leadership. And leadership was, you know, they, they were talking about something else. And it was incredibly important. I uttered a date about that packet. But essentially... This this uh, tablet held plans of attacks against America that would be devastating to America. Devastating. Right? And then I proceeded to tell you guys about that same thing. Right? And I believe it, it uh, that pop up in, in Pastor Paul's broadcast. I believe it did. Anyway. In that tablet were plans. Why? Because you had people here in America and abroad who were, they're galvanized by this Israel-Hamas conflict. They are. They're galvanized. And in that, in that vision, it was, it was an urgency in there. there. I also uttered out a date. I was wondering that any of you guys, somebody said tablet number nine is upside down, six, okay. The number on the tablet nine is upside down and six, there you go, okay. At any rate, that was the first of many plans. That was the first of many plans. It wasn't just one thing they were doing. It was a whole bunch. You know how in a dream sometimes you see, you perceive things in a dream, right? The urgency the sadness, the nervousness around this. Listen, we're, we're not, we're talking about a series of events that is guaranteed to set the USA on fire. Guaranteed. Uh, I 
at any rate. Believe it or not, believe it or not, um, somebody took heed to that. They did. They took heed to it. So, thank God for that. But they're not going to catch everything. Somebody said, how long do we try to do everything right before we give up? If we keep failing and God is silent, isn't that a good sign that I'm fighting a losing battle? No. Listen, a fight is when you fight. Somebody says, how long do I keep fighting? And and basically, you know, stop, quit, work. No, well, first of all, define the fight. Because I'll tell you something. I've been fighting, and it would look like to the world a losing battle for many, many, many years. There is nothing, there is nothing in existence that can stop me from a continuation in fighting. Because I'm not fighting to obtain anything from me. I'm fighting for everybody else. When you fight for yourself, you're going to give up in a heartbeat. You're going to lose focus. You're going to lose strength in fighting for anything, basically. But let me share this with you. When you fight for others, you'll never stop. If you're truly a vessel of love, and love, by the way, does not diminish, it doesn't shrink, it doesn't lose size or its strength or its it never loses its integrity or anything else. Love pours out. It constantly pours. It is never stagnant. When you're fighting for other people, come on, I'm giving you a hint so none of you will sit there and say, I'm tired. If you're tired, stop fighting for you. Stop fighting for what you want the outcome to be. Stop fighting for what you want things to be. And start fighting the good fight of faith for somebody else. Start fighting that somebody else would know the Messiah. That's how you fight. Okay. Hopefully you got that. Hopefully you did. You know, I found that out a long time ago. It is so difficult to, I, I can't even muster a reason to fight for me. I can't. If it were just me, I'd have given up a long time ago. I really would have. As, as the honest truth, I would have given up. Right? But there's nothing in me that can cause me to stop fighting. It's because everybody else is involved. In the Bible, it says, esteem others higher than yourselves. That's when you step into humility, right? When you actually do that from your heart, and you see the wealth of people around you and, and, and what they really are, nothing can stop you for, from fighting for them. My fight, my fight is for everybody but me. I don't need to fight for me. The Lord promised he would keep me. Hmm? He did. All right, folks, we'll have a continuation of these questions. All right? Uh oh, some, uh, somebody asked one. Oh, no, is this bad window or something? Oh, okay. Is another pandemic incoming? A few. Are we going to have more pandemics? Yes. Yes. Listen to me carefully. You ready? I'm going to describe something. Remember this. Because this one is bad. I don't mean to scare you guys. I want you guys to be aware of things. I'm going to give you the conditions. Infection within the body. Uh, antibiotics. Not very good. Normal stay in the hospital is two months. Hooked up to IVs, being fed antibiotics. Can you imagine how the infection sites are unusual? For example, infection in the shoulder. 
infection in your quads. Infections inside the body that are not accessible to your mouth or other orifices. We'll have a lot of that. Be ready. Just be ready. Be ready, be ready. Somebody says Marburg, no, no, not Marburg. This this is unknown. This is a bacterial infection of a very odd type of bacteria. Welders, those who do welding jobs and things who work around metals, um, these guys are going to get it pretty rough. All right, so be careful when you're welding. Please don't weld haphazardly. Please have your protective gear on. Don't neglect to, to putting your gloves on and your goggles, whatever you have to protect yourself with, because those little metal shards, this bacteria lives in metal on metal. And once it gets inside the body, it replicates like nobody's business. That's going to be a bad one. Okay, folks. How do you know your dreams are from the Lord? Well, whenever I've ever had a dream from the Most High, it had nothing to do with my life. It had nothing to do with my, the way I conceive things or think about things. It has always come with absolute conviction, right? Uh, the Lord does not have me guessing, lest something be against me. But the Lord gives you something you'll know through and through is from him. Oh, you know it. No. Folks, that'll be it for right now. Right? I'm still standing by. Somebody says, why are they sending rockets in the eclipse? We'll cover that in detail. We'll cover that in detail. Right? We covered most of that today, but we're going to cover the rest in detail. Again, all these space agencies, they're doing something. They're serving something. Folks, God bless each of you. Somebody said, please explain the religious spirit. Well, first of all, what is religion? Religion is a belief. It's what you believe in. What did Jesus say he accepts as clear and faultless religion? Go and find that, the person who had that question. Go and find what Jesus accepts as pure and faultless religion. Folks, God bless and keep all of you guys. I'm going to see you guys here. I'm, well, I may see you guys shortly. I may. I am overtasked right now at the moment. I'm looking at everything right now at the moment. And, uh, but I hope to join you all next time right here at COT. Okay. God bless each of you. You guys rest well this evening, if possible. Rest well. You'll need that rest. Rest well. Rest well. God bless and keep all of you. I'm going to see you next time right here at COT. If the player turns on at midnight, you guys know what that is. All right. Oh, just by the way, last midnight we talked about, uh, we, we had a, we're starting our conversation about breaking bondage, identifying issues, explanations, right? Things that follow your life and some directives uh, we were giving. We'll go deeper into those things in the midnight hours as we continue. Okay. God bless each of you. Look out for one another. I'm going to see you guys next time right here at COT. God bless.